welcome to another episode of Conversations with Cupid. I'm your host, Marla Martinson, and today I'm with Stephanie Dreyer. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, how are you? Great. I'm so excited to be talking to Stephanie Dreyer, best-selling author, children's book writer, vegan lifestyle expert, and mom. Wow, so, you pretty sound good. I know, <laughs> you're fantastic. Well, after transitioning to a vegan di vegan diet in 2010 which you went full just you know cold turkey you wanted to share the joy you were experiencing the health wellness relationship spirituality that just blossomed up out of this and show how delicious eating vegan is and you've got your youtube channel and your uh what your your sh it's the good life with veg how do you say it veg mama Veg mama. Veg mama. So <laughs> this is awesome because I'm a vegan and I love spreading the word that we eat more than tofu and we don't eat cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's what everyone always says. What do you eat? <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. I'm like anything I want. I just uh -huh. don't eat animals, but I eat it. There's so <laughs> many things on the earth to, that comes out of the earth to eat. So I eat good and I'm not a stick, you know, I have a... a you know, curvy figure, <laughs> not starving. So um, tell us, you know, how, how, so how old are your kids? I have a seven, uh, sorry, seventh grader. So um, a 12 year old, a fourth grader, she just turned 10. And I have a first grader who just turned seven. It was a big birthday week in my house. Oh, <laughs> with vegan cake? Vegan. Well, so that's an interesting, um, a whole story about side of me. My kids are not vegan. They eat oh. vegan in the house. Okay. But because when I went vegan, they were one, uh, four, and seven, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I should force it on them. I wanted it to be their choice. So actually, my oldest is vegetarian. She made that choice about two months ago. So mm -hmm. she... So I'm slowly indoctrinating them. <laughs> but my, um, you know, I educate. That's my goal is to educate, explain why I'm doing it, be an example. And then um, hopefully they, and in the home, I do all the cooking and uh, shopping. So they do eat vegan in the home. But outside the home, they can make their own choices. And, and my goal is for them to be mindful when they do choose to eat animals, that they're mindful about what they're eating and why and mm -hmm. how that makes them feel. And it's been an interesting journey. Yeah, and what do they say? I mean, how how far have you taken it? Have you shown them some of the videos, or you in? Because they're um, pretty brutal, I, some of them. Yeah, you know, I get PETA's you know newsletter with mm -hmm. stories and things like that, and um, I just kind of leave it out and let them see me crying as I'm reading some heart wrenching stories. So they ask a lot of questions, and they definitely um, are exposed to a lot and. And they think about it. Even my, my first grader, um, he'll say to me, you know, I really like chicken nuggets, but oh. I don't want to hurt the chicken. So I'm yeah. not going to have those right now. And, and they and do he'll have make the, the chicken nuggets at like Whole Foods that are vegan. They yes, have. they do. That's right. They, we, they have, that's the great thing. There are so many options. So, but it, it is great to see how they're processing it. You know, they're yes. starting to think, because I don't think, I mean, I, I was vegetarian for five years before I was vegan. And then I had like a little hiatus in between. Mm -hmm. And I even like disconnected. I, I was so disconnected from what I was eating. So think about kids, you know, like we just serve it to them. They're not, I, I think there's this whole mindful movement that's going on where we're trying to get our kids to think about things just in general more. And I think food is a great way to practice that mindfulness. Yeah, when I was growing up, I didn't uh, know, you just eat what you're served and then you like it and you don't think about it until I was in high school and they showed me, with the, I had a single survival class that showed us how to survive when we'd, you know, go out on our own and they took us to the grocery store and stuff and one day my teacher had this big poster up on the wall and she was, it was of a cow, it was a, I don't know if it was a drawing or a pic, real picture, I don't know, but there was no skin on the cow so it showed oh. the cuts of meat like here's the brisket here's the t where the tenderloin the ribeye and she said we're you're eating the muscles these are the muscle and i and i looked at that 
And I said, I'm eating muscles of the, this animal. And then I was off beef immediately <laughs> because we don't, we just disassociate. It's like, okay, it's wrapped nicely here. It's cooked. And we don't think where it's coming from, what suffering's going on to get this on right. our plate. Right. Oh my God. What a great experience to have that so young to be able to shift how you think, you know, very progressive. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, chicken's okay. And then you find out later, no, it's, yeah. they're treated just absolutely horribly. Uh -huh. and they're, or milk you know, and cheese. And milk and cheese. I was the Vegetarian. Yeah. You find out. And so you go on and, and uh, now I can't eat any of it, but I have a craving. I think I'm going to go to Whole Foods after this chat and get some of those chicken nuggets. I have a, <laughs> those vegan chicken nuggets. I have a craving for them, but there's yeah, so much good. Now, good. a lot of people might say, okay, well, it's expensive uh, to eat vegan or organic or something. So I'm sure on your show, you, you uh, give some great recipes. What do you suggest for people who want to do it, but they say they can't afford it? You know, these fast foods, a dollar for a whole meal or two at these fast food joints. Uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest. It's too expensive. And the other objection is it's too hard. Mm -hmm. And so I do, I do have some videos about how to save money and some posts and my articles on my website, how to save money, how to, um, not spend hours in the kitchen because you really don't. And I, I think the the biggest thing is if you're if you're going to transition mm -hmm. is to start small. You know, I did a cold turkey. I don't know if that was I would recommend that because it was pretty intense. Okay. Um, and I would slowly, you know, start cutting one thing out. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as you you get used to that, like replace it. Actually, replace like um instead of having um. A turkey sandwich, maybe one day you have a hummus wrap with vegetables, you know, see how you like that. And try try um, one new thing, maybe. Um, they even have turkey, vegan turkey slices, vegan meat yeah, slices. Yeah, they, they have. have, you know, they have all that. I mean, they, they really, have, there's so many alternative, yeah. you know, faux meats and cheeses yeah. and all Although that. Although those are um, gluten. They have, I love those faux yeah. hot dogs and stuff, but it's gluten. So I was eating those. Yeah. Stopped, and I mean, and you have to be careful because that's processed too. But I yes. think, um, you know, if you're just starting out and trying to transition, I think it's great. It gives yes. you the flavor profile. It's right. like you're kind of weaning yourself off until you learn to appreciate the whole foods and the green veggies and all of that stuff. Um, and I mean, I don't know. I find like the whole objection to it's expensive. I mean, cuts of beef are expensive. Fish is expensive. So I have to say, I don't feel like my grocery bill has like really went up. It's also when expensive I to be sick all the time or, or having a yeah. you know, heart disease or cancer. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, so there's trade-offs. It's and it's also prioritizing your health and your body. Yes. So, um, I, so anyways, I would say start by maybe adding something in. Once you start like getting a feel for what you like, like if hummus is like, oh my god, I love hummus. I'm a huge hummus person, <laughs> and you're like, I just need I, that's my new thing. You know, there, you can buy it at the store. There are all sorts of varieties, but you could also make it yourself at home right. really easily and less yeah. expensively. So there yeah. are ways to, you if know. If you can afford a Vitamix, uh, it's a vegan's best friend because oh, I do soups yes. in there and smoothies. And then I've got my juicer. I do green juice every day. And, you know, one thing about the thing about being hard, which I'll say it depends on where you're coming from. If you want to be a vegan, for me, what's hard is those animals in the slaughterhouses um, and the factory farms. That's hard. Uh, it's not hard for me not to eat them because I, I can't, you know, I can't even comprehend the suffering. So it's not hard for me to abstain from that so but if you're coming from a point of where you're really detached from it and haven't come to that place of of, of caring about the animals but you just want to do it for health reasons or or you know then it might be hard I guess but but uh, it's it's when you put your mind to it and just say hey let's make this an adventure let's make it fun um, or maybe think of the environment, right? Because it's ruining our environment, all, cutting down rainforests, um, all of the water used, the pollution. Mm -hmm. So you can find any reason you can to give it a shot. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. I love that response. I mean, it really puts it in perspective, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So because my husband will say, you know, you're extreme, uh, you know, and you're eating. And I say, well, what's extreme is what the animals are are, are oh, going okay. through. That's extreme. It's not extreme for me to have have a salad and, and uh, some fake tofu, you know, some tofu. Yeah, That's not extreme, yeah. you know, so yeah. So, um, uh, and your books, tell us about your book, your ebook. So yeah, I have I released two books last year. I have um, an ebook, a nonfiction, Vegan Mama's Guide to Going Vegan, and that was really because I went cold turkey. I 
had a huge learning curve when I went vegan. I was vegetarian for five years, like I said, but there was a hiatus in there. A lot had changed. And I also, um, I didn't have support. I mean, six years later, we have so many, um, so much more like vegan cheeses on the market. And oh, so much, the vegan cheese. You know, yeah. They make, like French I mean, cheese and, oh, and the spreads and it's yes. so delicious. Now that is kind of expensive, but it's so good. They make it with cashews. Yeah. And, and, and you don't have to eat that all the time. So like, right. you know, you're it's just, it's an indulgence. I'm, I'm with you. I love that stuff. Yeah, that's um, really tasty. So yeah, so the, the ebook really came out of a desire to want to help people and provide resources, take everything that I learned to make it a little easier because I was so overwhelmed and I didn't have a support system. I didn't know, I, there weren't as many blogs out there and, and, you know, this resources. So I tried to basically put all that together in like an easy guide that wasn't going to take forever for someone to read, but just could kind of take them through the process and, and be our help. That's what I wanted. I wanted to help people. So that's the ebook. Right. And yeah. And go ahead. Tell us about and, the other one. And then um, my other, like my love right now, cause probably I just released in October is not a nugget, which is my first children's book. And it's aimed at three to seven year olds. And the goal is to get kids thinking differently about their food um, as they're to think differently about animals as friends, not food. What a cutie patootie. Macy, was, was, we have somebody delivering something, so she's going nuts. So she wanted Aww. to come in on the interview. She came up. So. Yes, because what, there's v, uh, PETA has those little T-shirts and stuff with a little chicken saying, I'm not a nugget or a little yes. chick. Yes. And so that's sweet. Yeah, I'm, I'm a chicken. I'm not a nugget. Yes. Right? I, what I do you think that... about it, Macy? How? <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's right oh how cute <laughs> and that's exactly what the book is it looks it's a non-fiction book and it looks at the at the chicken not a nugget and it gives a fun fact for kids that, that so that they can relate to the chicken like did you know that chickens play ball just like you do and it gives an example and it goes through a lot of favorite animals that kids have you know from th right. you know and that because kids are so connected to animals when they're young and then something happens and we disconnect they are in society will say okay you, you don't eat a cat or a dog but it's fine to eat you know a goat or a rabbit or a cow or or and they all are sentient they all have feelings they're all you know, affectionate and smart and pigs are smarter than dogs, you know, yes. but they, but they're just thought of as just, you know, as a, as a pork chop, but we don't want them to think that right, Macy. <laughs> no, we do not. Yeah. And now on YouTube, we've got, uh, so many YouTubers, cool YouTubers doing, uh, vegan shows and recipes and all sorts of things. And I'll put the link to your show underneath you guys Thank you. and your books and um so you guys just give it a shot maybe like i say hey how about meatless mondays or kind of ease into it and just see how you feel because it's good for the planet it's good for your health and it's good for the animals and i know that people sometimes think well vegans are angry they're crazy they're trying to get us to do mm -hmm. what they think but we're just passionate we just love our our health and, and we love the animals so that's right <laughs> Yay! All right. Well, thanks, Stephanie, for stopping by and talking vegan. Thank you, Marla. Great to be here. Yay!